helping everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation, and today I want to talk to you about something that hits home for me and probably hits home for a lot of you all. And this is going to depend on how long you've been around flight simulation and what you've purchased over the last 10, 20, 30 years and what you've had fun with and what you've been unhappy with. Today's video is going to just take some time and talk about general advice that I've learned from mistakes, I've seen other people learn from mistakes of purchasing add-on aircraft for flight simulators in the past. Because over the last two plus decades, I've probably purchased more add-ons of aircraft scenery and utilities than I would like to admit to my wife over. But I want to take some of my lessons learned and just pass that advice on to new people that are brand new to flight simulation and some other people that have been around flight simming for a long time but never purchased an add-on, specifically aircraft. And part of this conversation can be applied to scenery, utilities as well, because this will be some blanket knowledge. I will not be reviewing any specific aircraft, any specific scenery, utilities, developers, or resellers. This is gonna be general advice for you all to use to make sure you don't throw away your money because I have in the past. I've been unhappy with purchases I've made in the past, mainly because there were things that looked great on the outside but lacked complete substance on the inside. I feel like that's a life lesson on a lot of things. Sometimes things look great, but really they're still just a pile of garbage. And that goes for a lot. Well, maybe not a lot, but that goes for some add-ons you may spend your money on for Microsoft Lights in 2020 X Plane 11, or even Prepare 3D version 5, 4, or 3. Because what you're gonna run into is some developers will develop something really nice. They'll spend a lot of time on exterior models. They'll spend a lot of time on internal textures and a lot of other things that are appealing to the eye. But when it comes to doing actual flying and you wanna study an aircraft and its systems, they are completely amiss or devoid of the systems that you would expect to fly that aircraft in real life. And don't get me wrong, they are gonna have a lot of the things that make the aircraft fly that if you got into the real worn, it would probably work out. But there are systems and system anomalies and setups that you have to do in the real aircraft that a lot of these are missing. And you've seen this already if you're a Microsoft Lights in 2020 uh, simmer or even X-Plane 11 simmer. A lot of the default aircraft have just enough switches, buttons, and toggles that actually work, but you can't do a whole lot else with it. And that's what you're gonna find right now for a lot of add-ons for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, like I've said in other videos, it is new, it is maturing, and it is getting better with every update. The same thing can be said for add-on aircraft. Currently, there are some very good uh, enjoyable aircraft, I should say. I know that they have their first near study level, if not study level, regional jet coming to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 very soon. It sounds like it should have detailed custom systems, avionics, engines, everything else should be well modeled and should act as close as you can get it to an actual aircraft, which is great. That is great news. But overall, what you've probably been seeing if you've been doing research before you buy, there are a lot of things that rely on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020's default settings. And this is the crux, the problem that you're gonna find if you're getting into Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 for actual IFR training and serious flight simulation. That doesn't mean that you can't enjoy these add-ons and that you can't find times that they work very close to what they should do, but they're not gonna be what you're expecting if say you're somebody that owns one of like the Seminole or some other aircraft that's used in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Some of these things don't work exactly like you would expect in real life because when they're relying on the default coding of the simulator, you already know there are limitations to that default coding unless you've gone and you've taken one of those custom mods from the community, which enhances your overall realism. And that's a great thing about the community. The community is making updates that make these things work better. And that goes for the default aircraft as well. So what am I saying for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020? Things are getting better. Uh, I personally made a couple of purchases for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, and I'm gonna do some semi-reviews. I'm gonna call them quick takes because they're not aircraft I personally fly in real life. 
I bought two aircraft that are completely opposite of the flying I do. They are the fighter jets that are currently out there, the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-15 Eagle. And I'm enjoying them. Are they perfect? No. But there is a promise that they will be updated in the future. And that's one thing that I want you all to make sure you're looking at before you buy. Make sure that whatever you're purchasing has a promise of updates and they're from a developer that will continue updating these products going forward. And you know that as time goes on, as that developer feels comfortable making custom systems, they're going to be implemented and they're going to be free updates or at least they're being upfront. They say, hey, once we develop the, the overall systems for this aircraft to work properly, there will be a $5, $10, X amount dollar add-on that you can purchase. You just want them to be upfront. So do your homework before you buy for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. What I've just said for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 also applies to X-Plane 11. Look at the aircraft, look at people's reviews, and see what the developer is saying for future updates. X-Plane 11 is well hashed out at this point. The default G1000, G, if, oh, the semi G530, 430, the uh, 750 implementation that's in X-Plane 11, the G3000 implementation that's in X-Plane 11, all these things are good. Not all those are default, however. Um, but these are things that have already been hashed out. They've been updated. They're continually going through updates to make them work like the actual simulator, or not simulator, but actual avionics in real life. So the nice thing is for a lot of the X-Plane add-ons, payware, especially for aircraft, you're gonna see where the problems are. They're gonna be already discovered and you'll know what you're buying right off the bat. And if they use default settings, if they use default coding or default avionics, you got a pretty good idea that you can jump in that aircraft and you'll be able to use it pretty, pretty much close to what the actual avionics will do in real life. So doing a, a flight from point A to point B with a SID and a star and finishing with an approach, you should be able to do all of that in X-Plane 11 with not just the default aircraft, because the default settings and coding is pretty well worked out at this point, but you'll be able to do it with add-on aircraft that use the default. So if you're gonna buy something for X-Plane 11, you have a pretty good idea that a lot of the stuff is gonna work and the functionality is gonna be there, where with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, like I said, those are coming through updates. But again, look at reviews, look at what people are saying, look at what the developer is saying for their future runs for that aircraft. Are they going to continue to support it with X-Plane 11? And specifically, X-Plane 11 has gone to Vulcan at this point. And if you're using Mac, they've gone to, I think, Metal. Uh, and I can talk about those in another video if people are actually interested in learning more about those. But what that means is there are two versions of X-Plane 11 that you have to think about now. There is pre-X-Plane 11, 11.5, and post-11.5 that have these new rendering options that some aircraft are being coded to, the majority of them are already swapped over to it. This rendering option allows for things to work faster. I would not invest into new payware aircraft that are not already being coded for it or at least don't have a promise for it soon. So look for that as well before you click purchase. So everything I've said for x 11, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is pretty well the same, just the main difference is Default in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 still needs to mature. Default in X-Plane 11 is pretty well hashed out. And if aircraft add-ons are relying on the default settings and coding in X-Plane 11, things are gonna work mostly the way you expect them to, whereas, X, uh, whereas Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is still catching up and doing IFR system work is still just not there. It's, it's coming, it really is, but it's just not there yet. When it comes to Prepare 3D version five, four and three. I have not had time to review that anytime. I won't have it anytime in the future. For the foreseeable future, I don't see myself touching Prepare 3D maybe until summer of 2021, maybe even fall of 2021, depending on my flight schedule, my volunteer schedule, and potential training schedule. So I'm sorry, guys. But what I've said for both of these flight simulators applies to Prepare 3D. Compare Prepare 3D to what I said to X-Plane 11. Prepare 3D is already hashed out. The default stuff is good. It's at a good caliber level that you can feel pretty confident using it for actual systems training and avionics for using it in a system of IFR. So that's what I'm gonna say about the add-on aircraft. The last thing I'm gonna talk about are sellers and developers. 
when you are about to purchase an add-on aircraft, and this is applicable to the aircraft, scenery, utilities, and whatever else you might find in between, if it's something that's being coded and sold by somebody that's not the developer, look at the reviews of that reseller. There are many out there that are very good, and almost all of the problems that have happened in the past have been resolved. My personal problems with some resellers, uh, I offended one reseller once in a public forum, and I'm very sorry that I offended you, but I spoke openly. I'm not gonna name who it was, I'm not gonna name the reseller specifically, but I'm sorry it offended you, but I spoke from personal experience. And I'm sure many people have had some personal experiences, even today, with the entire gamut of resellers. But make sure before you spend your hard-earned cash on anything, Look at how that reseller handles the delivery of the product. Look at if you move to a new computer and you have to activate that product again. Say there's some DRM, direct rights management to that add-on software. Find out what they require. Do you have to buy a brand new license to do that? Some did in the past. That's been mostly resolved today moving forward where all you have to do is email them or activate again with the same code. It's just you need to look into this because there are a lot of really great add-on aircraft and other utilities and scenery that you want to transfer. Say you build a brand new desktop, or maybe you, maybe you buy a brand new laptop that is perfect for traveling, but can do all the simming you want and more, and you want to swap over to a new PC. x is easy to do that with. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is easy to do that with. You can load in multiple versions of X-Plane 11 across different PCs and Macs, and use the same product key and then integrate them together via your network and you have a training station, it's great. Uh, but if you're gonna do this with aircraft or scenery, you might need to double check and find out what you need to do to make sure that product's available as you transfer over to a new device. Um, downloading things again, that's really gonna be a reliant on the reseller as well. You say you have a hard drive ca crash or your PC Maybe you're overclocking and you fry your motherboard and now all your memory controllers are busted. You can't get into your hard drives unless you go for a deep dive through a data recovery uh, system, which I've used, I've gone through several of them now and I can make some suggestions if you have problems in the future. But if you have fried your PC and now you're rebuilding and you gotta re-download everything again, that developer or that reseller may not offer a free download again because these are large files and you have to host all those files. You have to give bandwidth to those files. So look into the, do what it takes to get all that back again. Some you need to pay again for that product. Some may just say it's a nominal fee of a couple bucks to open up that bandwidth for you. And some just have a monthly subscription where basically you go in, you pay for the access to your files and some just make it unlimited forever. So keep that in mind when you purchase your add-ons. Uh, got some notes here to make sure I don't go too far off topic. So the last bit is if you're going to buy directly from a developer, uh, this is the one thing that I ran into trouble with in the past years ago. This is X plane nine territory. So a long time ago, some developers don't stay around and they may charge a pretty penny for the utility scenery or aircraft you paid for. But say after a couple versions of updates of the flight sim, they're done. They don't want to work on it anymore. And at that point, you're left with something that was fun for the time being, but now say X-Plane 9 went to X-Plane 10 and they're not updating it. It's not, it's not gonna stay functional. So keep that in mind. And that can happen to any developer. There are plenty of developers that are still around, but due to contracts and due to time and availability, they're not updating those add-ons anymore. And this has happened to me. There are some that are extremely great coders. They do great work. And there are previous projects that I bought into in the past years ago that I loved. Um, I'm not going to name them out because I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable if they see this video because I don't think they're doing the wrong thing. I just understand that they're going to get to it someday. And for the most part, they sold it within a certain platform. So there was an aircraft I bought for X-Plane 9. It was updated, I think, to X-Plane 10. And then the developer said, hey, guys, I'm done. I can't keep updating this. I don't have time for it. I have other obligations for the simulator itself. And that person has moved on to that. Now there's a promise of someday coming back and offering a new update that will be an add-on that will cost. So that's understandable. But keep all this conversation in mind when you're buying add-ons for your flight simulator because eventually 
you might have to buy the latest version of it to get it to work again. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave this. Is this an exhaustive conversation about what you need to watch out for if you're going to buy add-ons? No. I could get into some nitty gritty about certain other things and issues. But the thing is this, I don't want to put a sour taste in your mouth or anybody else's mouth about buying something and being too worried about it. You know, I like the Eurofighter. That's a uh, add on for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. It's fun. It flies like an interceptor. Does it fly like the actual Eurofighter from what I've been able to see from videos and documents I've seen online and reading through things? No. It's, uh, it requires a certain amount of finesse, and I feel like its low speed characteristics are desiring a lot more tweaking. And even same for the F-15. However, the F-15 is a lot closer to what I expect, and I'm even beta testing an F-15 for X-Plane 11, so I'm able to compare and look at actual, well, declassified training documents and training videos I've been able to find online to kind of see what to expect from both aircraft and compare. Well, I don't fly those, but I wanted them for fun because I wanted to break away from the systematic flying I do at work because I like to get into the simulator and have fun with the kids. I like to do it for myself as well. And I use add-ons and I use flight sims like X-Plane 11 to enhance my mental acuteness for certain things. I know a bunch of my friends would probably laugh at me and call me a sim geek, but I don't care. I like being over-prepared and that's why for training purposes, I use x 11 and x 11 Payware, and I use Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 as a joy and fun time, and add-ons for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 for fun. But leave comments, questions below about this video if you have questions about any specific developer. There are a ton out there. There's Aerosoft, Aerofly, and, uh, well, not maybe Aerofly anymore. I gotta think of all the names. xaviation.com, the xplane.org store, uh, Just Flight, you know, you have a lot of options, and I'm going to put some links down below in the, con in the description for places you can go to purchase from. But this was meant to be just some basic advice and sharing my previous uh, history, some of it, to help anybody out there that's new to simulation so you guys don't waste your money. So, Joe from NDB Aviation, thank you for your time. Thanks for your patience with my videos. And uh, like and subscribe if you liked any of this. More coming in the future. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy. See you again real soon. Bye-bye.